Hello friends. Today we shall be looking at some more romantic painters. Our objectives in learning this module like in the previous module are appreciate the artworks of the period. Look at lives and works of artists belonging to this period. We shall be discussing the following painters. Francisco the Goya Lucians, John Constable, Joseph Millard William Turner, William Black, Thomas Cole, Albert Bierstadt. Let us start with Goya. We have read about his works and legacy in the previous modules also. As his artworks move through various styles of the period, his last painting paralleled with that of romanticism. In 1819, Goya had fallen seriously ill and his doctor Eugenio Marque Arrieta nursed him back to health. On recovering the present Arietta, on recovering, he presented Arietta with his painting, which shows the physician ministering to his patient. The words at the bottom read in translation. Goya gives thanks to his friend Arietta for the expert care with which he saved his life from an acute and dangerous illness, which he suffered at the close of the year. 1819 when he was 73 years old. The painting Goya created in thanks is reminiscent of religious ex voto portraits that were offered to saints as expressions of devotion or gratitude. Here, the doctor, a mortal being, is raised to the heavenly pedestal as he has cured him. You can see Arietta supporting an Ilgoya and offering a glass of what may be medicines. What may be medicine? Look at the color contrast between the doctor's skin is warm and ruddy and Goya's shiny pale bluish complexion and the tilt of his patient's head Often mouth and half open eyes illustrate clearly a condition of severe weakness. His hands are clenched in evident pain. Even the color of Goya's robe and blanket is muted in comparison to the rich green of Arietta's coat and bright red of his lips. Arietta's gentle touch is apparent in his left hand which keeps Goya upright. The proximity of Arietta's face and the body to Goya's illustrates great empathy. It also shows that Goya's illness causes the doctor no fear or disgust. In contrast, three figures stand in the background, painted as demons and witches in his other paintings. His series of 14 pictures known as the black paintings 1820 to 1823 including Saturn devouring one of his children 1821 Prado Madrid offer an extraordinary insight into his world of personal fantasy and imagination. English Romantic Painting in 1793, Republican France declared war on Britain and with only brief intervals and with only brief intervals, the two countries remained in conflict until the defeat of Napoleon at Waterloo in 1815. For a generation, it was almost impossible for the British to visit mainland Europe. The tradition of Grand Tour was broken and painters and poets sought inspiration in the native landscape. Unable to travel abroad and made patriotic by a long war against the powerful foyer, patrons became increasingly aware of the unique beauties of the British countryside. 
these circumstances encourage the growth of a more truly national school of painting in england as in germany the first romantic stirrings were to be witnessed in nature poetry among other genres such as that of james thompson or in the nocturnal songs of edward young this return to nature this emphasis on power power of the individual must be seen as a reaction to the mechanization and depersonalization brought about by the industrial revolution brought about by the industrial revolution in england this has brought with it a rift between capital and labor between employer and employee thus establishing a new hierarchical social order commercialism and urbanization had led to unfree ways of life and these in turn provoked the artist and the writer to express their subjective emotive life and make the spectator or reader partake in their own existential struggle individualism became a means to retain mental and emotional independence in literature and art the conflict between the i and the world between the individual and the state was explored the aim everywhere was to express inner rather than outer realities english romanticism developed out of a new awareness of nature seen as a reflection of the human spirit natural phenomena such as storms disasters the mysterious rhythms of growth life and death were used to give expression to the dreams fears and aspirations of men nature also became an escape from the restrictive conventional world and drew attention to the diverse and dynamic energies of the cosmos accurate studies of birds animals and instincts reflected men's interest in the mysterious and hidden secrets of nature this renewed interest in nature was further stimulated by archaeological and scientific discoveries expeditions and narratives in which the romantic aspect of strange and distant places was described and dramatized as may be seen in the works of wordsworth or byron the philosophical writings of rousseau and berke were further encouragement to men to seek hidden meaning behind the surface of physical reality john constable 1776 to 1837 john constable the renowned english painter was a master of landscape painting he was not keen on trends and techniques he was just taken away by the landscape alone he maintained that a painting must take into consideration the flatness and the immobility of surface he belonged to an english tradition of romanticism that rejected compositions marked by a heightened idealization of nature his interest in portraying the intimacy of the surroundings of his youth with nature is compared with the poems of wordsworth the great romantic poet to them the patience of the man were to be discovered incorporated within the beautiful and permanent forms of nature windmills cottages and shades were place windmills cottages and shades were places which had strong personal associations for constable his renderings of them although descriptions of natural phenomena in the landscape reflect a spiritual essence his art becomes the medium through which the emotional experience is revealed earlier constable would only draw passive nature 
but around 1811 he began to express his paintings with a new version this was the use of light and its impact on changing landscape he could now distinguish between the permanent physical qualities of nature and such intangible and inconstant elements as light and moving air which reflected local color and tone values for and textures. Aiming to render this element of endless change in landscape, Constable created a subtle balance between light and form. To Constable, the physical and climatic changes he observed in nature became representative of a sequence of human emotions. Light and dark became metaphors of joy and despair. Constable introduced new pictorial solutions that contrasted sharply with academic principles. His work displays a new tension between art and nature, and between nature and his own emotions and reactions. His landscape paintings show the landscape as it is. It is neither planned nor contrived, nor does landscape form a backdrop for any other activity. Works like the Haven Constable hope to elevate depiction of a modest rural landscape to the same level as the historical and classical landscapes of Pusa and Clyde. As the historical and classical landscape of Pusa and Clyde, it has the fresh color and sense of visual exactitude that persuades viewers to believe that it must have been painted directly from nature. The painting is based on a site near Flatford on the river store in Suffolk, England. The haven itself is a type of horse-drawn cart which would have been a common piece of agricultural equipment used during the artist's youth. Since it is painted as a real piece, symmetry and composition take a back seat. Look at the natural tones and the contrast between the pool of water and the tall delicate trees and the strong brick house to the left. The painting is deeply nostalgic, harking back to an agrarian past that was fast disappearing in the industrializing England and an ability to remind him and others of an idyllic, comfortable and rural past. Let us look at some of his other works. Joseph Millard William Turner, 1775 to 1851. J.M.W. Turner is often paired with Constable as a landscape painter. He, however, follows another path in the painting of his landscapes. Like Constable and Wordsworth parallel, J.M.W. was like the Samuel Coleridge of painting. He infused nature with his spirit, his imagination. He was a prolific painter who left 300 paintings and 2,000 watercolors. He helped revolutionize the British watercolor tradition by rejecting careful underdrawing and typographic accuracy in favor of a freer application of paint, more generalized atmospheric effects. He did study landscapes, plants, and rocks in detail, but he sought to capture the sublime, something that strikes awe and terror into the heart of the viewer. He sees 
the elements of nature as forces that threaten to destroy man. He experiences the sublime mysteriously and it is therefore thrilling and exciting. Turner's watercolor paintings provided a later influence on his technique with oil painting. He started to use oil paint in a transulent manner, similar to the effect of watercolor, which helped produce his original style. His works cannot be treated as mere landscape. He transcends the nature by dissolving objects in light and through innovating spatial manipulations and the imaginative color creates an entirely new order of reality. No contour is most essential st structure makes them identifiable. In this, Turner is an important precursor of modern abstract painting. More immediately, he, his art had a huge impact on the Impressionists. Look at the painting here. In what looks like a landscape painting at the first instance is actually a comment on contemporary social and political issues. He can see the enormous deep red sunset over a stormy sea, an indication of an approaching typhoon. The far off steady sheep has its mass in red color, matching the blood red color of the sky and the sticky copper color of the water which serves to blur the lines between various objects in the painting. In the foreground, you can see a number of bodies floating in water. And because he can see them chained, we know they are slaves. You will also see the fishes and sea monsters waiting to eat. The central focus of the painting is on the interactions of various colors. Because of very few defined brush strokes, all objects and figures become indistinct. They are only defined by the color in the painting, being solely defined by the contrast with the pigments around them. One more painting by him. In this one, look at the blazing colors and light that thrill and dramatize the situation. By the way, he painted two versions of the painting. Firstly, you will see that it is not just who are looking at the fire. It is those people in the foreground who are also watching the terror of nature. This is an amazing thing that he has done. The brilliant light and color is the true theme of this painting, explaining why Turner was called the painter of light. The painting speaks to nature's power over man. People watched hopelessly and in amazement as fire rages. Look at the small dots of light from the man-made case lamps. Seem weak compared to the uncontrollable flames. The painting might also be hinting at political unrest. The houses of parliament were built in the 11th century and represented governmental stability. The fire occurred during the time of political change and some regarded the event as a symbol of the need for further reform. Now we talk about William Black, 1757 to 1827. Black was a poet, visionary and mystic, and all his pictures are poetically conceived. He strove to visualize the visionary imagery of the Bible and the epic poetry of the Thomas Gray, Milton, Bunyan, and Dante. He expressed the essence of his creed in the characteristically uncompromising terms. His illustrations to his own poems 
are not simple translations of the written word into pictures rather than the poems and the pictures are each counterparts in their proper medium of the image in his mind these mental images had for blake an almost objective reality and he did not regard them as poetic fancies but as actual visions of a reality veiled from the sensual eye in his own belief he lived in a world people with spirits visible to the eye of the imagination which had a reality at least as great as that of the material world around him in fact it may be said that for him the ordinary positions of reality and imagination were reversed and that the world of the imagination was to him more vivid and actual than the world of the senses how far his visions were hallucinatory is unimportant in considering his art and each one will come to a different conclusion on his point according to his own attitude to the unseen world what is important is blake's own implicit belief in the reality of his visions and it is this which gives the peculiar force and intensity to his work when unable to find a publisher for his first book of poems songs of innocence he determined to print and publish them himself he combined text illustration and decoration in a manner curiously suggestive of a medieval manuscript Thomas Call 1801 and 1848 he was one of the first great professional landscape painters in the united states and the father of the hudson river school of art he came from england at 17 and by 1820 was working as an itinerant portrait painter He traveled around Europe with generous donations from a patron and returned to the USA in 1832 after which he became a successful landscape painter he frequently worked from observation when making the sketches of his paintings but like most landscape painters of his generation he produced his large finished works in the studio during the winter months his style was that of romantic realism reflected in the painting of grandeur and rugged natural beauty of the american wilderness his fear that industrialization will create environmental damage coupled with conservatism made his paintings loaded with literary and moralizing ideas which tended to interfere with his art much like turner his the oxbo is considered to be one of his few paintings representing a specific place and time its large scale provides a sweeping view of spectacular oxbo bend in the connecticut river from the top of mount holyoke in western massachusetts the western massachusetts as an amazing landscape treasure of the america call depicts an actual spot but he composed the scene to convey the landscape's grandeur and significance exaggerating the steepness of the mountain 
and setting the scene below the dramatic sky. Along a great sweeping arc produced by the dark clouds and the edge of the mountain, he contrasts the two sides of the American landscape. Its dense, stormy wilderness and its congenial pastoral valleys with settlements. The fading storm seems to suggest that the land is bountiful and ready to yield its fruits to civilization. Albert Bierstard, 1830-1902. Bierstard was born in Germany, but raised in Massachusetts. He combined the German test for romanticism and the sublime with an enthusiasm for American West. Bierstard painted sunrise. Yosemite, Yosemite Valley around the time of his third trip west in 1871 to 1872. This view of the valley looking east at sunrise shows the Merced River with its calm surface reflecting the mountains and trees along its banks. Look at the rich yellow lighting gradually transformed into muted grays as it moves left. The still lake is a mirror of change as it captures the fleeting sensations of nature.